Sorry, Ben, the results for the end of uh, September, um, the headline would be that um, there's a bit of momentum that's um, leaving the market. So that's kind of the, the broad um, uh, assessment of that. But um, uh, four capital cities recorded a fall in the dwelling values uh, through that September quarter and yep. was led by Melbourne where values were down 1.1. Uh, Canberra, Hobart and Darwin also recorded declines in the quarter. But then you've got the, the mid the mid cities, the mid tier cities of Perth, Adelaide, and Brisbane, because Perth was up four point seven, Adelaide was up four percent, and Brisbane, uh, although it uh, eased back a little bit, it was still up two point seven percent. So an overall nationally for the quarter at one percent, but you can see you've got some that are up, some that are down, and some that are sort of tracking. Interestingly, Sydney uh, at 05 percent, which would suggest that that particular market might it's it's currently at peak and might be starting to have a little bit of momentum running out of that one too. Yeah, I think that's that's part of our broader theme that we are talking about, and that is that the momentum in the market, the interest rate restrictions, the cost of living, the, the forced slowing down of that economic flywheel in the economy is starting to show up now in the property space. So, you know, at the start of the year, um, we were quite bullish on a, a mid-year uh, cash rate change, but the economy has actually performed better based on the government spending into, you know, reliable jobs in the, in the sort of education, health, uh, aged care. And so we still have this very, very strong employment story. And that has meant that businesses have been able to continue to keep sort of charging that because the consumer has been active. Couple that with obviously the, the population growth that's also happened in terms of that uh, population story. So, so the economy's performed better and that's meant that the inflation story has taken a little bit longer and that's what we're seeing here now. But we're starting to, you know, you know, the momentum and the absorption that we're seeing in those particular markets is definitely changing. So if we go down and have a look at the, you know, some of those past performances. So thank you, Bryce, for doing the capital cities. Let's now break down and have a look at some of those regional centres and we can see that, again, we're looking at that sort of three month. That's where we want to sort of see what's happening and so we can see Tassie's down negative 0.2, um, regional WA, regional South Australia, regional Queensland. That has very much been a ripple effect and a sentiment and confidence story for what we would call the retail investor, the mum and dad investor who's potentially looking for affordable locations, um, probably also driven by a lot of uh, commentators in this property space uh, and buyers agents who are looking for those affordable markets because you know the, their clients are limited by their their borrowing power, and so that's continuing to chase that four hundred to six hundred thousand price band. And when they're not available in the capital cities, um, we are starting to see some of that you know sort of driven into those sort of regional areas. And you've got to also acknowledge that the Western Australian economy is running very well. South Australian economy is also doing quite well, and and same for the Queensland economy, um, you know, more broadly now. One thing that is happening in Queensland is there's more than likely to be a change of government. Um, certainly, that you know the Labor government that's been in 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 place for a long period of time has you know upset enough people now that they're looking for a fresh set of eyes and ears in terms of how they're going to look at their their broader economy. Then you can see regional Victoria is underperforming, negative one point four. Um, I suspect that you know, we talked about this as a combination of, you know, a lot of people moved to the regions with the very, very strict lockdowns we had here in, in Melbourne. Um, and so that might be just people readjusting their situations um, in terms of what's happening in the regions. And you've got, you know, also silly decisions by government in terms of, you know, Airbnb and stays accommodation and all of that. So that's going to restrict potential people movement in terms of interest rate tourism and and um, you know, sort of those types of things. So, so Victor and the Victorian economy, we know that unemployment's growing here faster than anywhere else in the country. So that's that hasn't sort of sat well with that. And then you've got regional New South Wales, which is still scratching out um, some growth as well. So even though it's cooling, we're still seeing some of those markets uh, achieving growth, um, and that's also part of that affordability story as, as as we look at those particular stats, Bryce. And there's definitely a correlation too, isn't it? Because you see the, the the biggest regional performers are also linked to the biggest capital city performers. And yeah. I guess the cautionary tale there for, uh, for investors is just to think sort of um, medium term around that too, because it wasn't that long ago that regional Victoria was very positive in terms of that growth. Very positive. 
yeah. you have Melbourne going, and then you, so so it 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 definitely is linked to the the big brother, the big sister of the of the bigger capital cities. But-